Hi there, good evening. Thank you for joining us on what is a pretty warm evening in many spots. We appreciate you joining us. My name is Susan and I'm a counselor at Student Financial Services here at the University of Vermont. Congratulations to all of the new students on high school graduations and on admission to UVM. We are very excited for you to join us as our newest Catamounts. So I will welcome you to the first of two live events where our goal of building a solid foundation with student financial services is intended to meet you where you are on your runway to joining us on campus in the fall. You may have already considered and accepted financial aid in your My UVM student portal. You may have only dipped a toe into your portal and maybe looking for guidance, or you may be wondering, how do I know what I got for financial aid? Where is my portal? What do I do? Wherever you are in your journey, hopefully we can help you out tonight and going forward. Here's a peek at our agenda for the next hour. I will get us started and then I will hand off the presentation to my coworkers, Martha, Terry, and Deanna with Kevin and Aaron helping us out behind the scenes. I will go over the steps for success. These are the first five tasks that you can complete before the July 12th billing statement to make your transition to UVM in the fall as smooth as possible. And then Martha will dig a little deeper into the billing, payment, financial aid. We will go over unexpected financial circumstances that may arise and how to manage that. And we will end with an opportunity to take some questions from you. You will have a Q&A feature available to you where you can type in questions. We'll do our best to answer as many of your questions as possible. Of course, this is a time for general questions that may be beneficial to everyone here. If you have questions specific to yourself, by all means, we are here for you and we will leave our contact information on the final screen. You can call us, you can email us, you can stop in to see us in the Waterman building on campus. And you can note here on this screen, we do have links to the UVM orientation information. There are videos and lots of detailed information that can really help you out on our website. So let's get started. The first thing that you can do as a new student to make your life easier is to designate a proxy user on your UVM account. A proxy user can be a parent, a guardian, a close family friend, any adult or adults in your life who are interested and able to help you manage the financial aspects of going to college. And this can allow you to focus on your academics and some of the other things that will be going on in your life. This person will be included in the billing statements and we would be allowed to discuss any billing questions or concerns with this person or people. If you submit your proxy access designation before July 8th, they can be included on that very first billing statement that is going to go out July 12th. All student communications from Student Financial Services will go to the student's UVM email, will be available in the My UVM portal, and then if you say so, also go to the designated proxy email address. So the second thing that we want you to take care of is to finalize your financial aid offer before the billing statement in July. In your portal, you go to the Student Financial Services tab and you may notice that there are requirements or additional documents being requested to finalize your financial aid. Please pay attention to these now. Submit any requests that may be, may be being highlighted and um, submit that so that your aid will pay on time. You will see in your portal that any grants or scholarships are accepted for you and those will be automatically accounted for on your billing statement loans and federal work study that you may be eligible for will be in the offered status in your account and those do need action and will pay to your billing statement if you accept them before July 8th and we will go into that a little bit more going forward here. Getting your loans to pay to your account takes a few steps. You will accept the loans in your portal and then you will complete entrance counseling and a master promissory note at studentaid.gov where you filled out your FAFSA. You will log in with your FAFSA login and your FAFSA password and complete those documents. 
that will allow those federal loans to pay to your account. If you were offered a Clark loan from UVM, you also need to sign a promissory note, and this one needs to be actually signed and handed in to student financial services, either by mail or in the Waterman building. And again, Martha will go into this a little bit more later. The third thing that we want you to take care of before July 8th is to submit any outside of UVM scholarships. Scholarships that maybe came from your community, from high school, from any other outside source. You want to get that information to us at UVM so we can account for that in your July billing statement. Typically, you'll have an award letter that you may have gotten. Um, you can forward it to us at the address here on the screen. You can even email us that information. Make sure to always include your name and your UVM ID number. That's that number that starts with the 95. You may already have a check from a scholarship funding organization. Make sure to endorse that to UVM. Sign it on the back if it is made out to you before you submit it to UVM. Another very important step that we want you to take care of before the beginning of July is to complete and submit your health insurance decision and waiver form. All students at UVM are required to carry health insurance. If you have health insurance from home, make sure that it will cover you at UVM. If it will not, or if you do not have a health insurance plan from home, you may enroll in the UVM student health insurance plan. The deadline for all students complete, to complete the decision or waiver form for the UVM plan is July 1st. If you do not complete the form by the deadline, you will be charged for the UVM plan on your billing statement and a hold will be placed on the student account. If you miss the deadline and you see the charges on your billing statement in July, don't panic. If you do not want that plan, you can still fill out that waiver, but make sure to get that into us before September 15th. So if you can take care of that decision making process, either accept the health insurance plan or complete the waiver before July 8th, you won't have any worries on that July billing statement. So I've talked about this billing statement a lot. It will be released to you on July 12th and is due paid in full to UVM by Friday, August 16th at 4.30. Ideally, prior to the July 12th billing date, you will have accepted any loans or federal work study in your portal. You will have notified us of any other funds or outside scholarships coming in. Please do not assume that we know how you're going to pay your bill. Please don't take any chances that funds outside of your control are going to get to UVM on time. Just keep us posted as to your plans and we can make any necessary notes on your account. Bills that are not paid in full by 4.30 on August 16th are subject to a $250 late fee and a hold on the account. So. Just let us know, 529 plans, scholarships, what your intentions are, and uh, we will make sure that we get you off and running on the right foot. Lastly, I'm going to ask you to take the step to set up a direct deposit in your My UVM student portal. Any funds that pay to your account above and beyond your build charges of tuition, fees, meal plans, housing charges, any payments above those bill charges are available to you as a refund to cover outside costs of books and supplies. If you set up that direct deposit account and it can be to a student account, it can be to a parent account, you choose the bank account that you set up and that will allow us to forward any refund to you in a timely manner. Now I will turn things over to Martha who will take you on a deeper dive into the billing and payment process. Thank you, Susan. Now let's talk about determining the amount that's due. These are the listed costs for the academic year 24-25. Now, please keep in mind that this is the annual cost and we are gonna bill by semester. So we're gonna bill for fall in July and we're gonna bill for spring in December. And the amounts are going to be half of the annual. So when, you're, um, when your student when we bill your student, we're not going to know their room assignment. So we are going to be including the cost for a traditional standard double 
and a meal plan for all students. Then when room assignments catch up in August, there may be an adjustment, credit, or a charge. Um, so if you're a proxy, you'll get an email notification to view if you've got a charge or a credit. Um, one additional note or caveat to the list of charges is any student attending the College of Engineering and Mathematical Sciences, Grossman School of Business, and the College of Nursing and Health Sciences are charged an additional $1,000 program fee per year. We have this great little tool right here for those of you that want to know what the bill is going to be before you get it. So um, feel free to visit this location, estimate your bill um, for that viewing pleasure. So there are many options to navigate paying your tuition bill. Um, so we're going to talk about several of those now. Some of you families have saved uh, for an, with an educational 529 plan. If you have, you're going to want to request those funds. They do take a while to draw down. You're going to need to request that they be sent in a check and include the student 95 number on that check. Now on the on the invoice that you're going to see and on our website, there is a specific um, location to mail that and the reminders to include the 95 number. So that will be provided to you as we get closer. You can also make payments directly online. Now you can make a payment as the proxy. You can make a payment as a student. You can make the payment as a guest payer. All you need is a student's 95 number and name. Um, there's a little caveat when paying though. If you use a debit or a credit card, you're gonna pay a 2.85% service charge. So I would recommend using the e-check option. You do need to provide your bank routing number and then either your normal checking or savings account number. Um, and it, it, it happens um, immediately, your account is credited. There's also a monthly payment plan. Now, if you set up this monthly payment plan in the next week, then your bill is going to be divided up into five monthly payments plus that one time $60 fee. Um, you know, if you don't set it up until August, it'll be a four month monthly payment plan. Um, uh, as a note, referring back to the previous slide, you want to make sure, if possible, you use the e-check option because, again, debit credit card payments will also receive the fee here. Now, these are pretty easy to set up. You do it through your account and billing activity. Um, the one caveat is that only one can be set up um, per student. So, um, if you have two parents that that both want to do one, you may need to combine it and, and have some uh, creative thinking about having perhaps one account that both parents dump the money into. And anyway, that that's one that can be one one issue, but um, it does work quite slick. Federal work study is based upon financial need. The funds are limited. Um, so if you are eligible, it's in your financial aid award now. Um, students are paid as with all payroll. They'll be paid bi-weekly. Um, it's about six, eight to 10 hours a week of work, no more than $1,000 a semester. So if you are interested in this, you want to go out and indicate and accept it. At that point, you'll be prompted to go look for a job. Now, your next challenge is you need to find the job, apply for it, and then have your interview and get hired by October 1st. So definitely the first ones in will have the most options for sure. Now, there are not only federal work study jobs, there's on campus non-federal work study jobs, but they're much fewer in number. Uh, and they can be found um, at the same location on our job export online. 
And keep in mind, we are centrally located with local buses. So with your student pass, you can take a free ride downtown and pick up um, a job at a restaurant or retail store or down at the sales center at the waterfront. Any student that applies for a FAFSA is eligible for federal direct student loans. So every student who's completed a FAFSA has an offer. Now their interest rates for both the subsidized and unsubsidized loans are the same. The origination fees are about the same. The origination fee is the amount that the government's going to keep. So if the student, say, is borrowing $100, the federal government's going to keep a dollar and 99 is going to pay to the student's account. Uh, interest will accrue on the 100. So in that sense, the interest, the origination fees, um, they also have the six month um, you know, grace period after they uh, graduate. Those are all the same with both the federal direct sub and unsub loans. The unsubsidized loan every student is eligible for. The subsidized loan is need based. So the benefit to the subsidized loan is it does not accrue interest while the student is in college attending at least half time. So that is every student out there if they have need um, could have up to 3500 in a federal direct subsidized loan and one $2,000 federal direct unsubsidized loan. Those students that did not have a need component will have a $5,500 federal direct unsubsidized loan offer to accept. The UVM Clark loan is also based upon financial need, and it is not does not require a separate application. Um, eligible folks are determined um, through the original application. Um, there, these loans do not accrue interest while the students in school. There is no origination fee, and the interest rate is five percent. Also, this one has a nine month grace period. One thing to keep in mind is, a, um, is that it just it cannot be consolidated with federal loans because this is a UVM loan. Any student, any parent whose student has applied for a FAFSA is eligible to apply for a federal direct parent plus loan. This is a credit based loan and um, it has a 10 year repayment that you can defer your payment. Um, but your interest does begin to accrue right away at 9%. The origination fee is 4.228%. And if you want to apply, visit studentaid.gov and use your FSA ID. Um, we will be notified of any parents' applications that are completed um, within a few days and then um, mod put that into the student's award accordingly. Finally, there are private education loans and there are several sources for this. You could look at your local bank or credit union. There's also private entities and state entities that offer private student loans. There are also some that offer parent private loans. Typically, student private loans do require a credit worthy co-signer. You're going to want to pay attention to the repayment terms. Every one of them could be different, whether they have origination fees or the variable or fixed interest rates. Now we have a tool that's provided to us from Elm Select, and it is out there to help you compare um, lenders that are currently being used. So it can help you um, on your journey for searching for the right lender for you. And now, I'm going to turn this over to Terry. 
Thank you, Martha. That was great and very helpful with the billing and financial aid information. Now I'd like to turn our um, uh, to the future a little bit and the what if. Um, so if there are changes to your financial circumstances, we may be able to review that for additional um, need based financial aid. So the with the FAFSA, please remember that we are capturing the 2022 income for your household. If it's a dependent student, an independent student, we would be looking at just the student's information. So if your income in 23 has um, dropped due to a new job, a change of uh, employment, illness, um, whatever the circumstances are, please reach out to our office. You can email us, you can call us. Uh, we'd be happy to discuss your uh, change of circumstance. The Federal Department of Education allows us to review your FAFSA and update it and use a different year of income that more accurately reflects your family's resources. For planning purposes for the fall bill, we would ask you to use your existing award and make plans for paying the bill until your appeal could be reviewed. And looking further ahead, um, there are times when a student needs to withdraw from the university due to illness or other events. And we would like you to know about our tuition refund schedule. So classes will begin on August 26th. Yes, that's a Monday. Um, and if a student were to withdraw within those first two weeks, that's September 9th, 100% of the tuition and fees would be canceled on the student's account. If a student had to withdraw between the 10th and the 16th of September, 50% of the tuition and fees would be credited to the account. Now, with those changes to the charges, there also would be changes to the financial aid just to keep things um, on par. Please note that after September 23rd, there is no refund to the tuition. The full charges for the semester are due. And if a student does need to withdraw and is living on campus, the housing and meal plan charges will be prorated for the time that they did attend. That would also be through September 23rd. After that date, then there is no refund for tuition fees, room and meals. So as the student um, begins here at UVM this year, um, we want to look ahead to be in good standing maintaining aid eligibility for the next year. Um, that would be 2526 if it's hard to believe already. Um, with uh, need based aid, that is the aid that is awarded with the completion of the FAFSA. So every year, the FAFSA does need to be completed at studentaid.gov and I guarantee you it's going to be easier next year. <laughs> um, the FAFSA is required to be considered for federal or need-based aid. Those are the federal loans and the federal Pell Grant. Um, we ask our Vermont residents um, to apply for the VSAC grant. That is the Vermont state grant that is administered through the VSAC organization. And lastly, to maintain satisfactory academic progress. What does that mean? That means a student needs to be advancing towards their degree and staying on pace to graduate within the four years. Um, a student needs to complete 67% of their attempted credits. So if a student is registering for classes, but then withdrawing from classes throughout the semester, their, excuse me, their um, completion rate would be dropping. So we want to encourage them to work with their academic advisor, work with our student support services um, to 
uh, manage those courses and make progress towards their degree. Now, students with merit scholarship, congratulations that you've worked hard to receive those awards. Um, for those requirements, you would need to maintain your full time enrollment for the fall and the spring semesters, and there is a GPA requirement. So your cumulative GPA needs to be 3.0 or greater. We check it after the spring semester. So this first fall semester, if you have a little bit of a challenge, then you wanna um, restructure for spring semester so that you're at 3.0 in May of 25 when we look at your GPA and renew your scholarship for the next year. And that brings us to our question and answers. Please know we're here to help and I would like to now be joined by um, Diana, my colleague, who has been collecting questions from the chat. <laughs> All right, Terry, thank you. Um, there's been lots of questions about um, specific healthcare providers and which ones will accept. What do you what would you suggest that families do? Sure. Um, it's it's hard to say what um, healthcare provider is going to provide. I don't know what their policy is with their employer related medical insurance. So I would go to the source. I would recommend that the um, parent who is carrying the insurance ask the, the provider um, if they will cover their student while they're attending school in Vermont. And only the parent and the student know what health care coverage they are going to need for their um, year here. So what I um, they can review that, see if they're covered. If they're covered adequately, great. They can waive our insurance. If they feel that they're not, um, then they can also take our insurance as well. Great, thank you. Um, a student is asking about one of their outside scholarships will pay after the first semester. Um, do they still need to notify student financial services of this scholarship? Yes, that would be very helpful. Um, we need to uh, know all the sources of funding that a student is receiving the resources. So we add all the scholarships into their financial aid award and um, know what is being received on behalf of the student. Perfect, thank you. Um, there's been quite a few questions about how much to borrow. So um, parents are asking about the Parent PLUS loan or setting up a payment plan. How will they know what or how much to borrow for, for the semester? Sure, that, that's a very um, common question to take the tuition and fee charges less the aid that the student is planning to accept and then getting to that net cost of the billable cost because uh, the tuition, room, and meals and fees are going to be billed to the account, but not the books or the transportation expenses. So what the parent wants to use is our billing calculator. That billing estimator is very helpful where you enter what your charges are based on your student, then subtract out your financial aid that you're using from your financial aid award letter. And it will even take out the origination fee for the loans, for the direct loans that the student is borrowing, if the student is borrowing those to get to that net cost. And then there's a calculator there to calculate if they're gonna use the PLUS loan, which also has an origination fee. So it is a very useful tool. If they want to um, also check that with us, we'd be happy to help with that. So give a call, an email, and we can run through the numbers with them. Perfect, thank you. Um, there has been some questions about proxy access. Um, if a student sets their parent up as a proxy, can they view their grades, the student's grades? 
they cannot. The proxy access is to allow is just for the student financial service office. It allows the student indicates whether we can talk to the proxy person about their account and their financial aid or just their account, not their financial aid. Um, it's it's up to the student and grades are not a part of the financial aid office. We will not be able to advise. And after a student starts classes, there may come a time where we'll have to say to to a family member, thank you for calling. I'll be happy to help you with a general question, but without proxy access, I can't talk about specifics. So it's very, very helpful to have that proxy in place. Um, one other point I'd like to make is if um, another party is wishes to make a payment for a student, but we don't want them to be a proxy to additional information. We do have a guest payer login where they can make a one time payment. That person, uh, maybe it's a grandparent um, wishing to contribute and they can make a one time online payment um, without a fee. Um, by they would need to know the student's name, which I think they might know and their 95 number. Perfect, thank you. Um, some students are asking when they should accept their student loans. Well, as we've indicated, I think that if they know that they do want to accept them, accepting them by July 8th will have them showing on that initial bill as pending aid so they, they know what the remainder of the uh, balance due is on their account. If they're indecisive about whether they're going to use the loan or not, they can leave them at the offered status um, and pay the bill in full, knowing that later in the semester they could accept those loans. But it, if they are going to use them, it's best to get those um, taken care of before they come to um, campus and and have that piece taken care of so they can really focus on their classes and getting acclimated to the university. Great, thank you. Um, there's been a question about a two parent uh, household and if they can set up multiple payment plans. That's that's a very good question. I have two options for the family. Um, so we can have one payment plan for a student per semester. So if we have two parents paying, one option is to have the student establish the payment plan, enroll in the payment plan, put in the checking account of the student and have the two parents contribute to that checking account because the payment plan is set up that it's an automatic draw each month, uh, an automatic debit to the account. The second option is that if parents are comfortable with this, one parent can pay one semester and the other payment can have the payment plan in the second semester. So two options to choose from, and we certainly can help them calculate things or they can use our billing estimator. Thank you, that's very helpful. Um, there have been some questions about a 529 payment. Um, if they've initiated the, the payment with their, their provider, um, how will they know if UVM has received those payments? Sure, once the parent has ordered that um, 529 distribution and told the um, institution, the students 95 and uh, name and 95 numbers so that it's printed on the memo of the check that is sent to UVM, the parent, if a proxy can look and see the current activity on the account, they can see 
everything that we can see as far as the activity up to date on the account as a proxy under current account and billing activity so they would see when that payment arrives. If that payment has not arrived by the due date, that's where they want to give us a call or an email. Let us know the amount that they have sent and we will notate it on the account to avoid that late payment fee. Great, thank you. There's a question about um, if financial aid covers um, electives, maybe we could sort of go over um, credit hours. Sure, a student um, uh, is a full time student with 12 credits or more for this fall or spring semester. 12 to 19 credits is the tuition rate that is published. Um, students that have been approved to take more than 19 credits would be charged additionally for tuition. Electives are part of their degree program and so they would be eligible for financial aid as long as it contributes to their degree program. I hope that answers that question. Absolutely, yes. Great, okay. Great, thank you. Um, there was another question about um, will my family be billed um, for the full year in August? Oh yes, I know some some uh, universities do that. It must be very confusing. We bill semesterly here, so uh, in mid July we're going to present the fall bill and it will be presented as the student is registered for classes um, for the fall semester and we will apply half of the financial aid award to the fall bill that will be due mid-august then the student will attend and register for spring classes in november and will bill in early december for the spring semester and that will be due mid-January. Probably more than you wanted me to say at that moment. <laughs> no, perfect. Thank you so much, Terry. Um, there are some questions about students' um, federal loans. Um, they're unsure if they were subsidized or unsubsidized. How can they check that? They can review their financial aid award on their student portal to see if it's subsidized, which is need based and subsidized means that the interest is not the student's responsibility when they're enrolled in school. Um, I think Martha explained that the maximum award is 5500 for a first year student. The maximum subsidized amount is 3500 subsidized. And if there is not financial need of 3500, then the loan would be the 5500 unsubsidized. Now, the loan is still um, a good loan in the sense that it does have great um, rights um, that are offered to the student where they if they go on to graduate school that loan is deferrable they don't have to make payments of principal int interest when they are in graduate school but the interest that does accrue on that loan um, if it's unsubsidized is the responsibility of the student they may wish to make interest only payments while they're in school to keep the loan from growing or um, they can not make payments if that's not an option for them and that interest would be um, added to the loan when they graduate and then they have a six month grace period before they would begin making payments of principal and interest on the loan. Thank you, that's so helpful. Um, a student is asking that they're not seeing a uh, federal work study in their award. Can they request that this be um, added to their, their financial aid? Well, that would be an appeal um, to see if they're eligible uh, for any more need-based aid due to a change of circumstances. Um, at, 
at the award we look to offer um, federal work study to a student if they have that financial need. Um, if they do not, we have other campus based employment on our job X board that they can apply for non work study positions. And there's a vast array of positions across the community that are available where students may work. There's also um, a note that um, the students UBM uh, pat ID is a pass for the city bus so they can uh, go around the community and it uh, there is also the UVM shuttle for them to get to and from employment. Thank you. Um, there is a question about the New England tuition break program, NEBI, um, and they're wondering how how this may adjust their tuition or their billing for the fall semester. Sure, sure. That's a wonderful program in um, the New England uh, Board of Higher Education. They offer a tuition discount um, at UVM and how it works is that it is used for specific programs um, from specific states. For example, there is um, plant, um, a plant biology program, I'm not saying the right thing, but it, from Massachusetts. And so if a student is enrolled in that program, they may um, receive that discount. It would impact, um, since the tuition is discounted, their merit scholarship would be discounted a percentage. There is great information on our UVM website about the specifics um, of that program. And if they went to uvm.edu and in the search menu put in NEBHE, that page would be available to them to look at all that specific information. Thank you. Um, there was a question about um, uh, a refund. So um, if they have a if a student has a credit on their account, how will they receive that that refund? Yes. So, so if a student has um, their student account, is where we bill all their charges and all their financial aid comes in. If their account is overpaid, there is a credit balance. We will refund it to the student to the account that is entered by the student on their student portal. That student would put in a direct deposit account number, their bank account and their bank routing number. And then they can see that refund being processed on their student account, they'll see refund and that's the start of initiating the refund from our bank to their bank. And then they can look at their bank online um, to see when those funds are available for, the, for their use. Perfect, thank you. A student is asking that they've received um, multiple outside scholarships um, and they're just wondering how how this might affect their financial aid offer. Sure, what we'll do is add those scholarships into their financial aid offer. Um, we would like to use those outside scholarships to offset the out of pocket expenses. So if it, if up to the unmet need of the student, so we have a budget, a financial aid budget, and then what the student's uh, uh, student aid index is, and the remainder is their financial need. So they can receive need-based aid up to that amount of funding. If a student is um, receiving additional scholarships, we're going to um, try to reduce their loan indebtedness first. Perfect, thank you. 
Um, I think we're getting close to the end of these questions. Um, I think one family has asked um, that they're, they're, um, they've had some changes in their, their income and they're just wondering what step they should take. Sure, that's a wonderful question. We certainly would be glad to review it. What I recommend is that they may call us or if they would like to send an email to sfs at uvm.edu here on the screen. Um, please do not send any sensitive information. Just in, um, let us know in a few um, the words what's happening. If you can provide some specific numbers that would be helpful or dates that um, things have changed, that would be very helpful. Then we will reach back out to that person and begin the um, to review for an appeal process. We will then if if we're going to review for an appeal, then we will um, request documents through the student's secure portal so that no private information is being emailed back and forth. It's securely and privately uploaded for our review. We will review that information if we can make any changes to the FAFSA um, so that we can um, award any additional need-based aid if possible. Thank you. Um, there's a question about how semester bills are communicated with both the, is it go to the student? Does it go to the parents? How, how, will, how will families see these bills? Sure, bills are posted. They are not mailed. Um, we, we tried to be green at UVM and the student will receive the bill. It's the student's um, account and the student gives the, pr the proxy the access to view the bill. So th that's why it's so important for the student to create that proxy status for their adult that is helping them financially, whether it be a parent, a guardian, grandparent share that information so that they can work together with them to meet those deadlines. Perfect, thank you. Mm -hmm. There's been a few questions about veterans benefits. Um, what would you suggest that a family or a student do as a first step? Sure, um, we have a veteran service office and it is depending on the type of veteran benefits, whether it's chapter 31, 33 or 35. Um, what I would recommend is that our veteran service page indicates that the veteran, first of all, if they're transferring those benefits to their student, would submit that to the Veterans Administration. Then the student would apply for those educational benefits at the Veterans Service um, website. They would notify our Veterans Service Officer here at UVM, which has a web page, and notify us that they wish to use those benefits. We will we will coordinate from there with them to um, ensure that they have the information they need. And we will, depending on the type of veteran benefit they're receiving, we will make the adjustments to their financial aid offer. Thank you. And um, there's a question about tuition insurance, if UVM offers this or should they go with a private insurance company? That's a great question. Uh, at this time, we do not offer tuition insurance um, uh, uh, policy, I guess it's called. Um, so they can review that with a private company, yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, it, it sounds like maybe a student has received a prepaid gift card. 
um, maybe as a graduation present, and they're just wondering if they use this, would there be a fee affiliated with this? There would be a fee. It is a credit card, unfortunately. That may be helpful to use for buying books at the bookstore. That might oh, be, or yeah. some other um, supplies they need um, for their trip to the university. Perfect. Sounds good. Um, it looks like a family is just wondering if they should send the 529 payment right away or should their student um, look at taking their subsidized loans or, uh, or just their federal loans? That's a great question. Um, it depends on what the family wishes to do. Um, some families decide that they do want their student, they want to stretch the 529 account out over the four years and possibly, you know, gain some interest on it in the next couple of years. Other families may want the student to have uh, a stake in the game and have a loan in their name and establish, excuse me, establish credit. So it really depends on the family's situation. The subsidized loan is a great opportunity though. Um, it's borrowing money from the federal government. The interest is not the responsibility of the student um, and they have that money available to them this first year with and if the student remains enrolled, they do not pay that money back until six months after the student graduates. So it's it's really a, a financial decision to talk with um, maybe an advisor, um, depending on how big the 529 is, or we'd be certainly happy to answer any questions we can here at the office. Thank you. I know we're almost close to time. Um, how about if uh, a student um, there they have some sort of questions about if they're accepting their federal loan? What are the the steps that they still need to do if they've accepted it in their student portal, but they're quite? It sounds like they're unsure of the next steps. Sure, yes. So a first year student that is new to UVM um, accepts it in their portal saying they wish to borrow that loan. They do need to make um, a, a legal commitment by signing um, a promissory note with the Department of Education. They would do that at the federal website studentaid.gov. That is where they um, would sign in with their FSA ID number. That's how they're going to electronically sign that promissory note. That note will be good for 10 years. So the good news is they won't have to do a note again. They, if next year they would apply for the FAFSA and then they would um, be offered a f uh, the loan possibly and they would just have to accept it. The last item, the third part that Susan had mentioned with accept master promissory note is a new student has to do entrance counseling. It's a questionnaire on the federal website and it's so that they know their rights and responsibilities about the loan and there they can complete that and then the loan will be electronically um, paid to their student account um, 10 days before the semester begins. So the semester begins August 26th, loans will pay August 17th. Perfect. Um, I think a few more questions. Um, a Vermont student is asking a, that they are saying that they've received a VSAC award and they're just wondering if VSAC communicates that information with UVM or how, how, how they should go about doing that. Wonderful question, sure. Yes, we communicate um, daily with VSAC, we receive um, a listing of 
uh, VSAC grant awards and VSAC scholarships, depending on what the student is receiving. Um, we add those into their financial aid offer um, and include them. And we then in, um, will communicate to VSAC um, that the student, we will verify their enrollment so that those funds um, will pay to UVM towards their student account. Perfect, so we're at five minutes before eight o'clock. Um, so I just want to remind families that our next session um, will be held on Wednesday, July 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and we'll be going over uh, billing questions um, and, and that will be going in depth with that. All right, um, so I, I think there's been lots of confusion about proxy access. Um, can you just review that quickly, Terry, to see or, or sort of remind families how a student sets their 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 parent or, or family member as a proxy? Yes, yes. So uh, the student um, will log into their student portal. They'll go to their student financial services page, the tab, and on that tab in the middle of the student financial service page is the proxy um, login or proxy access. So they'll click on that button and they'll enter their proxy's email um, and their name, and they will then expand on that person's name and then they will authorize them to view their account and billing activity. There's several check boxes for them to fill in. Now that's a lot of information. It might be easier to just look at our video about adding a proxy that one of our student employees um, recorded for us um, from a student perspective. So that is on our orientation page and it's that first link here, go uvm.edu forward slash SFS orientation. It's in, um, if you scroll down on that page, there's several videos, but the proxy is probably the most important one if I can say that a few times. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely agree. <laughs> Good. Um, so my last question is um, if uh, a family qualifies, if a student qualifies for. Oh, sorry about that. Um, if a family uh, qualifies, uh, if they do really well in school and um, they qualify for, can they qualify for a merit scholarship after they're enrolled at UVM? So that's a great question. At UVM, we want students to know what they can uh, be guaranteed. So we offer merit scholarships right from the start when they're admitted, and we guarantee those for up to eight semesters for the student full-time status. There are, um, we, there are a few scholarships within the different programs that they can discuss with their departments, um, but we don't advertise those at admissions um, because we don't want the student to be basing their their um, awards on future potential scholarships. We want them to know what they have um, and let them explore their program with a solid foundation and funding right from the start. We do offer some wonderful outside scholarship listings and those are available Again, at our website, if you went to uvm.edu and searched on outside scholarships outside of UVM, we have a whole listing that we've compiled of various scholarships that students may apply for. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. If you have any more specific questions, we welcome you to send an email to us at sfs at uvm.edu.
uvm.edu. So that stands for Student Financial Services at uvm.edu. Um, we hope to see you next month for our next session on July 17th. Thank you.